everyone. Seth Rudesky for Playable.com. Uh, I'm wearing a red shirt today in honor of a certain red head. Hey. <laughs> Paul Castry. Uh, okay, so first of all, Paul, how many Broadway shows have you done, dear? Nine. Nine Broadway shows. And what we're going to focus on is the art of live singing. And Paul is notorious for one thing. Not only doing many, many Broadway shows, but Paul, what is your signature? I sometimes forget my lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> and I sometimes, we literally came up with so many stories that we have shared together of horrible misfortune that's happened and his amazing way of quote unquote getting around forgetting the lyrics that make it 10 times more obvious that he has. So the first one we're going to do is Forever Plaid, where Paul was, uh, now, Forever Plaid's really hard. You have to understudy two roles when you're an understudy. You understudy Jinx and Frankie, and you were on for Frankie. Right, I was on for Frankie who uh, is sort of the semi-leader of the group, and we're singing this song, beautiful song called Moments to Remember. When other nights and other days will find us gone our separate ways, we will have these moments to remember. The drive-in movie, where we'd go, and somehow never watch the show. Okay, so that's how it goes. It's like a cute little thing, and then he winks. Okay, so this is this is what happened to Paul when he was doing the show. Okay. <laughs> so he just went. We will have these moments to remember. The quiet walks. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> the quiet walks. <laughs> that's the first craziness. And by the way, the, the minute I said that, I heard three other plants go <laughs> It was crazy. You see the glassy-eyed stare, and then you're like, what's gonna happen? Okay, so quiet, instead of driving a movie, quiet walks. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, quiet. The quiet walks through the woods. And then Paul decided he would save it, because you remember the second part of it was supposed to be, and somehow never watch the show. So Paul's like, here's where I'll save it. Now, you thought by saving it, you would change what? The pronoun or the? Well, I realized that they didn't know we were at a drive-in movie, so the show seemed so specific. So I thought I'd change the the to an uh and make it very clear to the audience. And by the way, the whole phrase normally ends with a sassy wink, you know, sort of sexy. So Paul ends it with a wink to imply like, you know what I mean. No, we actually don't. Let's try it. The quiet walks through the woods and somehow never watch a show. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about yet again another another forever clad. So he's on for Frankie, and normally the lyric is supposed to go, um, uh, Ma Tilda, sing it everybody. No, no, no. no. Come on, sing along. Now. Trying to get the audience to sing. Ma Tilda, come on, sing along now. Ma Tilda, help me sing the song now. And all the other plaids are in the audience going, come on, sing with them, sing what he's singing. So Paul A sang the wrong lyric. But then I decided to save it, I saved it. by making it rhyme. <laughs> Not that it had to be English words, it simply rhymed. <laughs> no one will know the difference. It's an amazing, amazing matinee for ever plaid. Five, six, seven, eight. Ma Tilda, come on everybody. Ma Tilda, under Eddie Uddy. Under Eddie Uddy, if you're from where I'm from, you know what that means. <laughs> it ended with Uddy. <laughs> And the final one, supposing Saturday Night Fever on Broadway, and we go see Betty Buckley at Fine Signs. We went and saw Betty Buckley, and you were playing for Betty, and so she got graciously it. invited us to her hotel room, and I was doing Saturday Night Fever, and she was very sweet and just chatting with us, and I, 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 I was like, Betty, how do you, I don't understand when you're feeling very emotional on stage, and you're having a scene maybe where you were crying, like I had to have, and then you have to sing a song. I was having a lot of trouble with my throat. You know, when you cry, your throat closes up. So I was like, how do you, how do you marry the two? How do you free yourself vocally, but still invest in the emotion of the scene? And she was amazing. Remember, she got down on all She's fours, like crawling, around. crawling around like Grizabella, saying, what I did was, <laughs> was amazing. in full like bejeweled outfit and heels on the floor. And it was fascinating. You know, she's a great acting teacher. And so then the next night I did the show, I started my solo and I was thinking, now what was, what exactly was Betty doing when she was on the floor? And of course, nothing came out of my mouth. But he just stopped singing because he was thinking about something else. And then there's a double twist ending, which you will now hear. So this is exactly what happened that night. Okay, here we go. So here I stand on the edge of the night, nothing in my life. Nobody listens, nobody listens. 
listen. Okay, so walked off stage, hating himself, thinking what? Thinking like, wow, that wasn't good. What am I gonna tell everyone that just happened? I can't say, well, I was thinking about Betty Buckley crawling around on the floor of her hotel room. Let me pass it by a stage manager who goes, Paul, I'm so sorry your mic went out. I know. That's right. God smiled at him. Because <laughs> I was the only one on stage they were like, oh my God, Paul's mic went out. And I was like, well, it's all right, things happen. Are you in a Broadway show now? No, I'm not. Okay, take care. <laughs>